Let's go to Sarah in Indianapolis. What's up, Sarah? Hi, Dr. John. This is so wild to talk to you. It's more wild to talk to you, I promise. How are you? Oh, I'm doing good. Doing good? Yeah, how about you? It's exact same. Doing pretty good. So what's up? How can I help? Well, I feel like a silly goose after that last caller. That was heavy, man. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, man. There... It, yeah, there is no comparison. I mean, there's no, like, comparing heaviness, man. It's Everybody's heavy is heavy to them, so that's awesome. So what's up? Hey, yeah. I, I, I guarantee right. you what you're about to drop is big, so go, go no, for it. No, it's really, it's, it's silly. Um, okay, so, all right. Um, my husband has friends from college that are having a bachelor party at the end of this year. And they're, I'm a thousand percent sure there's going to be um, strippers involved. Uh, that's a that's a that's a, a strong degree of certainty there. <laughs> I'm well, a yeah, I mean, that's just that. It's awesome. That's the that's their guy. You know, that's just like what they're into. Um, my husband has made it clear to me in the past that that's like not his jam, but like you know, those are friends and whatever. Um, and this the reason why it's like a bigger deal this time. It's because, like, right before we got married, like, he's made our whole relationship. He's like, yeah, I went in college, but, you know, like, it's, I don't like it. Like, I just, you know, I like to do with my buddies and stuff. Um, and then, you know, about a week before we got married, he had somebody else's boobs in his face. Oh, <laughs> and, man. Uh, so, so he did yeah, this for I, his bachelor party? Well, okay, his buddies, you know, took him. But, yeah. So, hmm. anyway. And, Poor uh, guy and just he, got forced right into it, huh? Right. Oh, it's so sad. No. Wow, man, I, I'm other, really sorry that. The, well, the, the thing is, like, I like to think of myself as like a cool chick, you know, like I like dirty, naughty fun. Like I'm all about it, like a good time. Yep. It was just like a weird betrayal because like he told me like he wasn't gonna, and then we did, and then, so hold on, hold on, whatever. It's not a weird betrayal. It's a regular old spit in your face betrayal. That's what it felt like. Yeah, hold on, hold on. And honestly, that's what it was. And, that's, Full and stop. honestly, yeah. And if it hadn't been, you know, the week before our wedding and everything was set in stone, I probably wouldn't have married him. But I'm glad I did. I love him. We've been good since then. You know, we fought it out. <laughs> we, uh, you know, we have a son. Like everything's good now. Um, but now it's like I'm like, oh God, what do I do? Because it's like, not like good now. Looking. It's not. Oh no. Oh no. Don't tell me that. Well, I mean, you're nothing has changed. You have a you have a boundary, and you have said this violates what my understanding of covenant is. Okay, and this is important to me. And he I has said, I don't know where I'm at with it though. It's like the thing, like I don't because I have like three sides that I like ping pong around. All like, right, let's play ping pong. Play. It's like, okay, we're solid. I'm cool. Like, this is fun. Like, go out and have fun. I, I know it doesn't mean anything. Like, it, she doesn't care. That's her job. Like, she doesn't care about you. And then I'm like, well, you know, screw him. If he wants to do that, then I don't want to be with him anyway. And then I go to the other side where it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. That's cheating. <laughs> Even though you pay for it, that's cheating. Like, so I'm, I like ping pong between these three different feelings. And it's like, I just don't, I'm I, scared that if he I, goes, I'm going to resent him. And then I'm scared if he doesn't go, he's going to resent me. Cause I don't want to give him rules. Ew. Like I'm not his mom. You know what I mean? Oh, sweet Sarah. <laughs> oh man. You're like the best in every category. You're just the best. Oh. Okay. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> so, um, oh, there's so much here. Jeez Louise. Um, you do have thoughts and feelings on this. And And I don't want (laughs) them. I know you don't want them. And here's what I think. I think the thought of some other woman shoving her breasts in your husband's face makes you sick. Yeah, because that's our thing, man. I do that. Okay, there you go. That's your job. (laughs) And it makes you sick. And then layered on top of that is, well, I want to be cool and I want him to keep loving me. Mm-hmm. And on top of that is, but it makes me sick. And so on top of that, it's like, well, I mean, it doesn't mean anything, whatever. So mm-hmm. let's take. Let's take. 
this in my and this is totally me. Okay, this is less about a strip club. This is more about I have values, and I have boundaries, and your values are important, and your boundaries matter. And the first time your husband spit on him, mm-hmm. and then just walked right through. And so he, he banged up against your boundaries and they didn't hold. And you, not him, you are the one who've had to deal with picking those bricks back up and putting the wall back up, the boundaries back up. Mm-hmm. And now it's coming again. And so this is less about is this cheating or is this not? Am I the cool wife? Whatever. I've got friends whose wives don't care. And I've got friends whose wives, like, couldn't breathe when they caught their husband with a bra ad out of a Sunday paper, right? So everybody's got different values. Yeah. It is asinine, completely asinine, to say that going to a strip club is not extramarital sexual encounter. Full stop. Now, where, like, me and my wife disagree on the conversation is I think cheating is about secrets. And like, I think you can cheat by going to get coffee with somebody. Like, so I I think cheating is about secrets. She is, her definition of cheating is different than mine. Hers is about sexual encounters. Here's where that, that, here's why I want to stay away from that. It doesn't matter. I don't want you to get into a semantics conversation with your husband about, is this cheating or is it not cheating? Am I cool or not cool? That's not the, that's not the issue here. The issue is your boundaries matter. Well, see, I don't think it's about boobs. <laughs> you know no, no, I mean? no, like, it's not. It's about, I want this, and he's saying, well, it's like, no. I don't I don't think I care. I really don't. Like, Because like I said, I like to have dirty, naughty fun. Like, You whatever. do like, care. Sarah, you care. It, well, I think I care because it's like he pretends to like be somebody who doesn't like that. And like, if you like that, then just be honest with me and be like, yeah, we're going to a strip club. It's going to be a good time, but you know, I'm coming home. To, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yes, your husband's not telling you the truth. That's what it feels like. It's like just it, be it's, who it's you are. It's not what it feels like. It's what it is. Then why does he do that? Because you're not being honest with yourself. You're not super cool with this. You don't think so? No. But I want to be. Great. You know what? I want twenty million dollars. <laughs> I want it so bad. You're on the right track, man. You book sold out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, it sold a bunch. So I'm, I think I'm approximately $19,980,000 away from my goal. <laughs> so here's the deal. Like, you, you just. Yeah. What do I do with this, man? You have to own the fact that you feel devalued. So then do I give him a rule? Do I tell him not to go? Because that feels yucky. What feels more yucky? Your husband lying to you? Or your husband saying, I don't really care how you feel? These are my bros, dude. I, I think he would, like, listen to me if I told him that. But, like, I don't... Why, why, so why, why, why are you so afraid to tell him what you think, what you, what you find value in? Why? Because I just, like, I don't know. I just, like, have this image of myself and I want... To not be, I don't want to not care. You know what I mean? Like I want to be. But you do, <laughs> and it's okay. Trying to force yourself to not care. Okay, here's a sideways example. And if this example goes off the rails because it just came to me, then they're going to edit it out, and this will never exist. Okay. <laughs> um. In when I was the dean of students at a law school. One of the things we would do is I gave everybody a questionnaire. I think it was out of Southern Illinois. Is a questionnaire just on behavior practices. How much sex are you having? How much do you drink? How much weed do you smoke? When's the last time you did cocaine? Right? Questions like that. And the purpose of this was just social norming. Just f- so you could re- find out really about your classmates. And then what I would do is I'd get up and read the data. And here's what was Wild. They would ask people the, their questions about themselves, and then they would ask the questions about what they thought their classmates were doing. And there was always a significant gap between how much people actually drank, how drunk they were all the time, and how much people thought they were drinking. Because people thought they were, people were drunk 95% of the time. 
and they were really drinking 60% of the time. And one of the most damning statistics every, and I'd get up and I'd read it to the class. Cause I was like, Hey, here's what y'all think, but here's what truth is. If you don't want to drink and you think, well, 90% of the people are, then you're going to find yourself in a situation that you don't like. You're going to compromise your own values because you want to belong. And the desire to belong is so strong, so strong. The one that used to break my heart was the number of, and this was particularly among the female cohort of students, the number of people who had to consume two to three alcoholic drinks to feel sexy, to engage in sexual behavior. And every year I got up in front of the class, the the whole crew and said, if you have to consume substances to tampen down your own value system, don't. It's there for a reason. And you have a set of values that mean something to you. One of them is honesty. One of them is fidelity. One of them is you want to be the only person being all up on your husband. (laughs) One of them is, do you value me more than your stupid college friend? Right? You've got these values. Wow. (laughs) And you're doing (laughs) everything you can to squash them in the name of cool chick. Yeah. And hear me say your values matter. So what do I tell him? What, what do you, I do, John? <laughs> what you feel and what you know to be true. This isn't an argument about cheating. It, it, if, if it's cheating for you, then that's the word you use. And I'll honor well, I that. I don't think it is. It's just like. It's, it's deceptive. It's lying. And it's, I don't feel comfortable with this. Period. And here's my, here's my promise to you. This isn't the only thing. Right? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Sucks for you. I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff in your home that you're not super down with. That you do everything you can, whether it's to smoke a little, to drink a little bit more, to wear something a little, whatever it is, you're you find ways to squash how you really feel about a thing to try to live up to some fantasy, some myth, mythical character you've created that you think your husband wants. It's not even that. I think he wants that. I don't know. It's just like me, I guess. Yeah. So here's how I've you... Always, I've always been everywhere. I'm always the life of the party. Like, I'm always the loudest. I'm always like... You know, the whatever, like, I always want to have sex all the time. You know, that's me. That's like my yeah. bam. Well, there's different between wanting to have sex all the time and being the life of the party. One of those is awesome. One of those is exhausting. Yeah. Fair? Which one's which? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wanting to have sex all the time if, if, uh, with your husband's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. Wanting to always... It's a defense mechanism, being the life yeah. of the party. It's a way that you can wave your wand over here and go, hey, everybody, look over here so that you don't really see what's going on. And I'm talking as a former life of the party. Now I'm yeah. a total drag on the party. You know why? Because I don't care. How do you get there? That was a lot of therapy for that. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of therapy. Yeah, honestly... Here's where it is. It started with me looking in the mirror and being honest about what I felt about stuff. I had to start telling the truth to myself. And I had to start telling the truth to my wife. And I started telling the truth to my close friends. And so for, what do I do? Here, 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 here's the, here's the, the honest to God truth. Um, I want to be very careful how I say this. Um, uh, I don't want to bring people into this unnecessarily. I've been in a lot of weddings in my life and I've skipped a number of bachelor parties and those people are still the closest friends I have on the planet and I'll still trust them with my kids. If I'm in the hospital, I would trust them with my wife. If I got deployed overseas, I love them and I trust them. And also I didn't participate in their bachelor party. Right. And it's not a matter of judgment. It's a matter of me. I chose not to. 
And so it's not an either or. I also go to bed at midnight when I'm, everybody's hanging out. I'm lame. My company's, we're going to do an event in Vegas. And I'm like, dude, how can I get out of this? I can go to bed at 11. Not get out of the event, but like (laughs) like when the event's over at 10, I bet I can be in bed by 1045. I'm just not cool. I'm just not. And my friends that are really my friends, they still love me anyway. And they make fun of me and they whatever. But it doesn't compromise my marriage and it doesn't compromise my personal values. Right. And it doesn't make me not love them any less. And it doesn't make them love me any less. Right? So you've, cur- you've painted yourself into a corner where if I do this, then he's going to... You don't know that. The only way forward is you're going to start telling the truth with yourself and start telling the truth with your values with him. And that's hard. Because my guess is you have not done that in a long time. And that doesn't compromise you being a fun, rambunctious, sexy wife. It doesn't compromise that at all. In fact, it provides infinitely more freedom there. Because right now you're trying to be reckless and fun and you are shackled to a story. You want to have reckless and fun adventures in your bedroom. Go completely unshackled. This thing, this, my analogy is really getting ugly here. It's getting pretty, pretty sideways pretty fast. That's not what I meant. You know what I meant, Sarah. But listen, the fewer, the fewer values you have to tamp down, the more energy you have to expend having excitement, enjoying fun. I hate that you're in this situation, but how do you have the conversation? You sit down and have the conversation, say, this is how I feel. And you're worth that. You're worth your values. 